I don't think people even realize this. I don't think anyone talks about it at all because I think that all the top players, it's just assumed. You know, I don't think top players are like, oh yeah, man, you look at your, you know, it's it's not something top players even talk about because it sounds so stupid. It sounds so obvious. All right, let's do it. This is going to be a, a quick one. It's going to be a quick video about the most important skill in Super Smash Brothers Melee. Like when I play somebody new or somebody on Unranked or whatever, this is the number one thing where I'm like, this guy is like good or bad. Like this is the number one one thing that I've found in my experience that is the like it's the ultimate predictor of what I think separates someone who's good and can win versus someone who I feel like I can just kind of beat without really having to work too hard. And it's really quite simple. Let me let me boot up some let me boot up Super Smash Brothers Melee and demonstrate. This is both gonna be simpler than you think, and also it's gonna be it's gonna blow your mind open. What's a good way to show this off? Well, let's just go into trading mode. Even trading mode is fine, right? Whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's very simple. So I play a lot of Sheik. Uh, Sheik's like my secondary. Everyone knows this. All the all the Reeds, longtime Reeds fans know this. But I play a lot of Sheik, aka Teak. It's the name of my Sheik. Okay, so I'll be playing Sheik on Unranked, you know, and I'm like, whatever, you know, you obviously with Sheik, you're gonna kill someone. And then, you know, after you take their stock. So obviously after you take their stock or whatever, every Sheik player is going to sit here and they're gonna charge needles. Right? And then you kind of do this thing at the beginning of the next stock where you kind of, you know, you kind of juke them out for a little bit and pretty much every Sheik player eventually is going to try to get the opponent. This is like super duper common. I think there's some big brain Sheiks that'll hold onto the needles, but a lot of the time, like you'll see people, you know, they'll come down. You're going to, as the Sheik, you're going to dodge their respawn invincibility. You know, some Sheiks do some ledge stalling or whatever. You know, some Sheiks are just going to do some platform movement. Obviously it's Final Destination, so there's no platforms. And then you're going to try to chuck the needles at your opponent. And let me tell you, 90% plus of slippy unracked opponents will just get hit by these needles. And take 18 damage or 17 damage. And it's like, what? Like, so, you know, they'll like, they'll come down and they'll dash dance or whatever. They'll try to fight you and they'll jump around and then you like wait and you like wave dash back, you throw the needles. 90% plus people get hit by these needles. They don't, you know, they, you can see that she's throwing them, right? You could be dashed, so you could literally just run up and shield them. You could jump over them. But I kid you not, I think 90% plus of opponents just, they just get hit by the needles. And in my experience, it is almost a like crystal clear indicator of like, can you hang with good players if you get hit by these needles or not? If you just get hit every time, that is like the biggest indicator to me that I found that I'm like, yeah, uh, this guy can't really hang. And eventually, like, even if, like, the first stock of the match was close, it always kind of gets bad, and then, you know, it, it never, it never, it never pans out for them. And it sounds so stupid, right? It's not, it's like, it's like, what, you're getting hit by these needles, you're taking 18%. That's not that big a deal. First of all, it is kind of a big deal, right? Because if you're at zero, you can take about 40% of damage before you're in that golden percent where you can't crouch cancel anymore. If you get hit by a full charge of needles, that's huge, right? That's halfway there. But it's not really about the needles. It's actually about the fact that I don't think, and this is something I talked with Scar about recently, I don't think most newer melee players are looking at the opponent. I think most newer melee players are looking at themselves. Maybe this is something that some of you guys have noticed about yourself. I was literally talking to Scar. Remember when Scar was taking lessons with Mango a while back? And we were talking or whatever about like how to get better because he was very invested in this at that point. And he was like, Tove, do you look at the opponent or yourself when you move around? And I was like, what? I think I look at the opponent, man. And um, Scar was like, I think until very recently, I looked at myself. And it's the effects of looking at your opponent versus yourself are actually so far reaching. It is impossible for me to overstate how important it is that you are looking at your opponent when you're playing. You will actually like stop getting, you will actually plateau so hard. I think a lot of people don't even realize this. We had a guy call in a radio melee this past week or two weeks ago. Uh, this was me and PP, right? And this was when we had Plup on. Okay, Plup was our guest. You know what? In fact, let me let me actually pull it up. Let me actually pull up the footage because I actually want to I want to show you guys this question we got. Watch watch this. Watch this. This actually you got and, and really really watch PP's facial expressions. Okay? Watch PP here. So my question is on the topic of heart, mind and body players. I don't think that it's con conducive to learning. <laughs> you tell us. And I've actually sorry. been thinking about the play styles in the manner of watching your opponent, watching yourself 
and doing the optimal thing and how looking at that can make you a better player faster. Look at Pepe, look at Plump. What are your thoughts about that? I can start. Um, <laughs> th- 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 unless Plump wants to take it. Uh, no, you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, heart, mind, and body is like mostly good as a descriptor, like you're saying. I think understanding what you're good at and what you like is important, but I think beyond that, yeah, it's probably not too useful. Focusing on the skills that actually get you better, like when you need to look at yourself, which, you know, as you get better is much less, and when you need to look at your opponent or the space between them as you get better or you just want to get better, it's much more. And, you know, playing well, doing things that are good. I mean, that's just always going to be more important. I don't think... So, yeah, I mean, when comparing description versus focusing on things that get you better, it's better to focus on things that get you better, for sure. But people at various points usually have to take some time to understand themselves so the description can be valuable, too. It just kind of depends. Um, but, yeah, so I, so I would say i overall agree i'm not sure how valuable looking at yourself really is. this is the part i really want to call attention to by the way let me just make sure this is captured so i would say i overall agree i'm not sure how valuable looking at yourself really is outside of when you get hit um and even then only briefly but yeah i mean for the other two yeah i would say i agree you notice how pp was like yeah i don't know about this looking at yourself thing that's not really like a play style and it's also just not something you should be doing as you get better and in the context of the question i think this is really interesting because i think this is like something people don't understand like i think people think it's okay to just play the game and be looking at yourself constantly like i think there are a lot of people that don't realize how important it is to be looking at your opponent as often as possible and i guarantee you that every good Good player. I, I mean, watch, I don't know, Amsa did a stream where he was playing with an eye tracker and like, you know, surprise, surprise, Amsa is never looking at himself, except when he gets hit and then briefly or between stocks. Sometimes between stocks, you look at yourself for a bit so you can do the sickest platform wavelengths or whatever. But, you know, in general, like good players are not, they're not running around looking at themselves. And like someone mentioned in chat, this does have far reaching implications, right? Because part of watching your opponent when you play is also being comfortable enough with your own movement that you can move around and not make tech skill errors while not focusing on your own character. And I think this is like, I mean, it all ties into itself, right? Like you need to be fluid enough in your own movement and you need to trust your own control of your character to the degree that you can focus on your opponent. And actually, when I say look at your opponent, I literally mean your eyes are following your opponent as they move around the stage and not looking at your own character and trying to kind of use your peripheral vision to see where your opponent is. And if you've never done this to play, I mean, seriously, try it. Like, open up Slippy and play while looking at your opponent. And if you've never done this, you'll immediately feel like, huh, I'm a lot, this feels uncomfortable. And your eyes will want to gravitate back to your own character. Fight that urge as hard as possible. And if your movement gets worse at first, just power through it. I promise you. I have fought, like, players who are slow, like, slower, and their tech skill wasn't as good, and they didn't do as much crazy platform movement on unranked but i can tell they're looking at me because those chic needles that i threw they would actually block or they would actually jump over or whatever right and again it's okay if you get hit by those chic needles every now and then it's not about like dodge them 100 percent of the time it's more that is my litmus test as to like are you going to present a challenge at all once i figure you out or are you just gonna you know what i mean the players that don't that the players that get hit by those needles every time, it's like a really bad sign. It's a really, really bad sign. And like invariably, they are just worse at the end of the day. Even if they're a little slower or whatever, I actually feel like I have to play proper neutral. I can't just roll my face on the controller and they get hit by everything. And yeah, boot up Slippy, play people and see like, damn, am I just getting hit by those needles every time if I play a Sheik player? And more generally, see if you can watch your opponent and actually just force yourself to keep your eyes on your opponent. If you, if your movement get gets worse don't worry you will get used to it and you'll be able eventually to play comfortably while looking at your opponent and you're gonna get so much better because like so many things rely on you looking at your opponent i mean so many interactions like if you're not the kind of player that like watches your opponent you're gonna get hit by like like a, g- a great example for me is like falcon um stomps and like knees you know where they do like overshoot knee or overshoot stomp in neutral like they'll just kind of come in like yolo across the stage right and i guarantee you like most players that aren't looking at their opponent they're they're getting caught by those overshoot knees and those overshoot stomps. Whereas, if you are actually keeping your eye on your opponent, you will be able to react to those and get your shield up in time. Or, you know, better yet, get a move out, but at least get your shield up in time so that you're not getting popped up by a stomp at 50 and then killed, right? And yeah, I mean, it sounds so simple, but like, it's actually, I mean, I would wager like 
less than 10% of melee players in the grand scheme of things actually are looking at their opponent. And I don't think people even realize this. I don't think anyone talks about it at all because I think that all the top players just assume. You know, I don't think top players are like, oh yeah, man, you look at your opponent. You know, it's, it's not something top players even talk about because it sounds so stupid. It sounds so obvious. <laughs>